Nanny Doss, also known as the Giggling Nanny. Doss was born in Blue Mountain, Alabama, as Nancy Hazel to James and Lou Hazel. Nanny was one of five kids. She had one brother and three other sisters. Both Nanny and her mother hated James, who was way too strict and over-controlling as a father and a husband. There's even evidence that Doss was conceived illegitimately, as James and Lou married after 1905. And census records also show that in 1905, she and her mother were living on their own. Nanny also had a very unhappy childhood. She was not a very good student, and she never learned how to read that great. Her education was erratic because her father forced his children to work on the family farm instead of attending school normally. When she was only about seven, the family was taking a train to visit relatives in southern Alabama, and the train stopped suddenly. Nanny hit her head on the metal bar of the seat in front of her, and for years after, she suffered severe headaches, blackouts, and depression and she blamed these and her mental instability on this incident. During her childhood, her favorite hobby was reading her mother's romance magazines and dreaming of one day having her own romantic future. Later on, as she grew, her favorite part was the Lonely Hearts column, and the Hazel sisters' teenage years were restricted by their father. He forbade them from wearing any makeup and any type of attractive clothing. He was trying to prevent them from being molested by men, so he said, which happened on several occasions. He also forbade them to go to any dances or social functions, even if they were school-related. Although with these strict rules... Doss was married at age 16 to Charlie Braggs. They had met at the linen thread factory where they both worked. And with, surprisingly, her father's approval, they married after dating for just four months. He was the only son of an unmarried mother who insisted on living with them. Bragg's mother took up a lot of his attention and very often prevented Nanny from doing things that she wanted to do. The marriage did produce four daughters over a four-year period, from 1923 to 27. Having four children under the age of four put a lot of stress on Doss, and she started drinking and casually smoking, became... A heavy addiction. The marriage was a, a very unhappy one, and both suspected each other of infidelity. Braggs often disappeared for days on end. In early 1927, they lost their two middle daughters to suspected food poisoning, suspected she had killed them. Braggs fled away from her, taking their eldest daughter with him and leaving the newborn with her. His mother also died around this time. Doss took a job at a cotton mill to support her daughter and herself. Braggs eventually returned in the summer of 1928 with him and the other daughter was another woman a divorcee with her own child. After that, Dawson Braggs soon divorced, and she returned to her mother's home, taking her two daughters with her. He always maintained that he left her because he was frightened of her. Living and working in Anniston, Doss soothed her loneliness by reading true romance and other such reading matter. She also resumed poring over the Lonely Hearts columns and wrote to men advertising there. 
A particular advert caught her interest by a man named Robert Harrelson, a 23-year-old factory worker from Jacksonville. He sent her romantic poetry and she sent him a cake. They met and got married in 1929 when she was 24, just two years after divorcing Braggs. The pair lived together in Jacksonville, along with the two surviving daughters that Doss had. After a few months, she had discovered that Robert was an alcoholic and had a criminal record for assault. Despite this, the marriage lasted 16 years. Doss's eldest daughter gave birth to a baby boy named Robert Lee Haynes in 1943. Doss came to help, and after a painful few hours of labor, the baby boy was born, but soon died after. Exhausted from labor and groggy from ether, thought she saw her own mother stick a hat pin into the baby's head and later told Mozzie and Florine. They told her how Nanny had said the baby was dead and that they noticed that she was holding a pin. However, the doctors could not come up with an explanation for the death. After this, the mother and daughter drifted apart, and she began to date a soldier. Doss disapproved of him, and while Melvina was visiting her father after a particularly nasty fight, her son, Robert, died mysteriously under Doss's care on July 7, 1945. The cause of death was diagnosed as asphyxia from unknown causes. And two months later, she collected the $500 life insurance policy that she had taken out on Robert. In 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allied powers and the end of World War II and Harleston, Doss's second husband, was one of the many people who celebrated rather robustly. After an evening of particularly heavy drinking, he assaulted Doss. The following day, as she said, she was tending her rose garden. Doss discovered Harlson's corn whiskey jar buried in the ground. The assault was the last straw for her, and she took the jar and topped it off with rat poison. Harlson died a painful death that evening. Not long after, Doss met her third husband while traveling to Lexington, North Carolina. He was Arlie Lanning, and she married him within three days of meeting him through another Lonely Hearts column. Lanning was in many ways like his predecessor, Harlson. He was an alcoholic and a womanizer. However, in this marriage, it was Doss who was the one who disappeared for months on end. And when she was home, she did play the doubting housewife. And when her husband died of what was said to be heart failure, the whole town turned up to his funeral in support of her. Afterwards, the house that the couple had lived in burned to the ground. It had been left in Lanning's sister's name. And had it survived, would have went to her. As it happened, the insurance money went to Doss, and she very quickly banked it. She soon left North Carolina, only after Lanning's elderly mother had died in her sleep. She ended up at her sister Dovey's home. Dovey was bedridden, and soon after Doss's arrival, she died. Doss had joined the Diamond Circle Club, looking for another husband. There's where she met Richard L. Morton, from Kansas. While he did not have a drinking problem, he was a womanizer. 
but before she can poison him, she ended up poisoning her mother, Louisa. On January 1953, when she came to live with them, Morton met his death a mere three months later. After that, Doss met and once again got remarried to Samuel Doss of Tulsa, Oklahoma in June 1953. He was a clean-cut, church-going man. He disapproved of the romance novels and stories that Nanny adored. In September, Samuel was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms. The hospital diagnosed a severe digestive tract infection. He was treated and released on October 5th. Nanny killed him that evening in her rush to collect the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him. The sudden death of him alerted his doctor, who ordered an autopsy. And the autopsy revealed a huge amount of arsenic in his system. And because of that, Nanny was very promptly arrested. Nanny Doss confessed to killing four of her husbands, her mother, her sister Dovey, her grandson Robert, and her mother-in-law. The state of Oklahoma centered its case mostly around Samuel Doss. The prosecution found her mentally fit for trial. Nanny Doss pleaded guilty on May 17, 1955, and she was sentenced to life in prison. The state did not pressure the death penalty due to her gender. Unfortunately, Doss was never charged with the other deaths that she had committed. Although they gave her the harshest punishment they could, she later died of leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965, only having to serve out 10 years for the numerous murders that she had committed against her family. I hope you ghouls enjoyed this episode of Lady Killers. I know the giggling nanny, Nanny Doss, is kind of a more well-known one, I kind of wanted to throw her in here. She's really interesting to talk about, especially considering that she got life in prison, sure, but it was only for one. Even though, like, it doesn't matter if you put, like, multiple death sentences on top of, like, or multiple life sentences on top of life sentences, it still would have been nice to see her get, like, five life sentences plus whatever for how many people she actually killed. It's crazy. She got away for decades doing this it's it i don't know it, it's it's like a female killer thing that they always get away with it for so long it's just it's fascinating but yeah ghouls let me know in the comments if you really are enjoying this series or if you're not because it seems like youtube's like really messing with my views like the last couple weeks were like really good and now all of a sudden youtube's like nah fam no one's gonna see your crap in their subscription boxes and your views are gonna go back down again so let me know if you're seeing this stuff. If not, you know, please hit the bell button. It helps, I'm sure. I don't, I don't know. YouTube's all messed up. But if you could do that, I would appreciate it. But as always, ghouls, the last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social media is on the screen as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.